I'm Steve Ludwig, and I've been a professional marketer for about 30 years. And in that time, I have figured out more of what not to do than what to do. I'm going to share some things with you today that we learned about a number of years ago. Uh, three reasons advertising fails and how to avoid them. Uh, we came to this because we found that there was this recurring theme with every potential new customer we sat down and talked with about advertising. First of all, they don't want to talk about advertising. I bet you don't either. We're not having an advertising conversation today. We're talking about three reasons small businesses don't grow and how we stop that from happening. How do we make the growth happen again? Success is almost always preceded by failure. But we found that many advertisers were just giving up pretty early out of the gate. Why? And we kept coming back to this feedback from customers just like you saying, we tried it and it didn't work. And I give that, I attribute that quote to every advertiser ever because it's, it's a common shared experience we all have. I'm a small business owner. I've had advertising fail the same as you. So how do we take a really, really deep dive and understand the main reasons why this happens to people like you and me? And how do we avoid it? So we sat down and we identified, after a lot of analysis, three common reasons, the three commonalities that tend to always be there. The first I call ready, fire, aim. You might have heard that referred to before, but we'll talk a little bit about how we get into that as advertisers. And, and the second is too many roadblocks. We make it really, really difficult sometimes for customers to become customers. So we'll talk about that a little bit. And the third is we've got really blurry vision sometimes. We don't really see what's happening or not happening and we can't figure out what decisions make sense. What's working, what's not working. So we'll talk about that. Let's start with ready, fire, aim. And before I get into that, I want to just give you a heads up. At the end of this video, we're going to talk a little bit about a next step you can take that is risk-free to you, uh, that is our investment in you to say thanks for listening today, for watching today, and helping become a better potential customer for us. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Three reasons advertising fails. The first one, ready, fire, aim. We often make decisions in the wrong order. Messaging which is key from, from our standpoint, becomes like something we think about at the very last second. And we don't create urgency for people to engage or react or take the next step as to become new customers. So let's talk about that. Our marketing plans typically come together in the wrong order. We jump straight to what we're going to buy, what media we're going to use to advertise. And we don't really start with goals and strategy. We tend to uh, buy media and it's here's why this happens because there are a lot of people out there whose job it is to sell you media and you occasionally run into one who you really like maybe somebody who you feel really uh, has a great idea and you want to pursue it and that's all great intentions. The problem is we're buying media uh, first and really that should be one of the last things we do in building our plans. We'll talk about that solution in a minute. The second thing that, that we do is we blow our entire budget on one concept, one combination of media, message, etc. And we never really tested it. We don't know that that's the right way to be advertising. And yet there went the budget, right? And now it's too late to make changes and adjustments on the fly. So let's talk about how to, how to fix that. The solution is to follow this basic marketing formula that we developed. It's nothing special, but it's a structure. And what most of us lack is structure, goals and strategy in our marketing in our advertising. So what is our basic marketing formula? It is targeting plus messaging plus reach equals results. Okay. Who do we want to talk to? 
what do we need to say to them that will really emotionally connect and engage them and get them to move in a direction we want them to go? Not just that it's cute and they remember it. Did they do what we ask them to do? And third, reach. When is the right time and place to tell that story that we want to tell so that the person we're talking to has the ability to absorb it, to engage with it, to react to it. And then all of that adds up to results, okay? Now you're seeing that little uh, retargeting arrow on the diagram. The, there's also this aspect with reach of not just like where and when, but how many times. A lot of times, one of the biggest mistakes we make as advertisers is we don't have enough frequency with our message. It takes, in, in, 30 years ago when I was a little baby radio sales guy, we would say, you have to reach people three times minimum uh, for the message to start really getting through to them what you're offering. Today, uh, data from companies like HubSpot and people who really follow this and, and have a lot of data to work with say it can take 18, 20, 24 times uh, asking a customer to do something before they may actually do it. And so 10 is really a minimum that we work with. Um, and we can talk more about that. But it's really applying a basic formula so that on the front end, you're designing it better and more intentionally. And on the back end, you have a way to evaluate it. When we don't see the results we're looking for from a test, we can go back and say, okay, are we targeting the right people? Yes, okay. Um, are we reaching them enough times and in the right, do we feel like we're happy with how and when we're reaching them and how often? Yes. Well then, it points us in the direction of messaging which is really still the art. There's an art and a science to advertising. And today, most targeting and reach has really become scientific. Messaging is still an art in finding words that mean something to people and that will really motivate them, move them in a direction that you want them to go. It takes effort. And that's why Ready, Fire, Aim is one of the three big reasons that advertising fails because messaging is usually an afterthought in Ready, Fire, Aim. And that's never going to get us where we want to go. Customer acquisition, you have to think of it as its own little ecosystem within your business. It needs care and feeding. It's like an aquarium, right? And it should only be done with purpose, expertise, and accountability. So avoid Ready, Fire, Aim and turn it into Ready, Aim, Fire. And that will help you avoid one of the big three reasons that advertising fails. All right, let's get into the second reason that advertising fails. And then we'll talk about how to avoid it. Too many roadblocks. We can make it really difficult for customers to engage us. It, we can make it really hard for them to find us. We can make it hard for them to connect to us. And a lot of times we're trying to put them through an obstacle course that they just aren't going to take. Uh, we make it very hard for customers sometimes to engage, engage us. We make it frustrating. And you hear a lot about this concept of user experience. Well, user experience is a real phenomenon. It's a real thing. Uh, sometimes we give customers too many choices. Sometimes we lead customers to a dead end where the process just kind of stops and they don't know what to do next. Or we leave them guessing what to do next, and they choose to do nothing. So don't put customers through hoops. Uh, don't put obstacles out there that don't need to be there. Um, I've had conversations with business owners any number of times where eventually the conversation gets around to, well, this is how we do it, and if people aren't willing to get do it this way, then I don't want their business. That's not a good customer for me as an advertiser, as an advertising agency, because customers today expect it their way. They expect it on their terms. And if you're gonna put them through hoops that they don't see as necessary or that they see as give them giving up control of the process, you're not gonna get them as a new customer. 
So we have to offer customers ways to become actionable leads on their own terms. It cannot be all about us. It must be all about them. And the solution is really to understand the journey that a customer takes to become a customer of your business. So on the screen here, we've got this diagram of our uh, typical customer journey. It begins with awareness. This is usually the time that people see advertising. They become aware of your business and the problem that you solve for them. It then moves to interest. A fraction of the people who become aware of you want to know more. And we have to meet those customers on their terms. Uh, in today's environment, customers expect total control over just about every aspect of making a purchase, whether it's service, whether it's a product, uh, they expect everything to revolve around them. And whether or not you think that's fair, it's just a reality. And so we have to work around what are customers' expectations. We have to put ourselves in the shoes of that prospective customer and say, what does this person want? What do they see as an obstacle? What do they see as an unnecessary hoop? How do we reduce the friction, eliminate reasons why they will fall away and keep the greatest number of them moving to the next step in the customer journey, which is evaluation. This is where we generally get an opportunity to make an offer, price that offer, and place urgency on that offer. And so this is how businesses grow, and we need those at-bats uh, to be able to hit enough singles, doubles, triples, home runs to win the game. So put yourself in the shoes of that new customer. Let's really understand the problem that's brought them to you and how you distinctively offer a path to success. We think about it a lot as uh, the, you can kind of put yourself in the shoes of that customer who think of them as like a character in a movie or a television show. Uh, they have a problem, right? And to solve that problem, they meet a guide. There's a person they come in contact with who lights a path forward. And uh, there's twists and turns in the movie, the plot twists, and you avoid failure opportunities and you end up in this happy place of success, right? The, the, the movies always end uh, where the guy gets the girl or the hero wins the day. Uh, and it's the same kind of advertising has evolved into this kind of storytelling. Except we have to tell that story about your business and how you take that person who has a problem and you guide them to success. So let's remove friction from the user experience and that will help us avoid the second major reason that advertising fails. Customers have too many options. Uh, they have cynical attitudes, uh, short attention spans. They don't have time to play games. They don't have time to make, to, to fit into your box. And they will never cede the sense of control in the process. This is today's modern consumer. All right, the third reason advertising fails. Let's explore um, blurred vision in a little greater detail. So what I mean by blurry vision is that we're often not tracking and reporting as much data as we can. Your website, your phone system, your point of sale system, your email database, uh, your inventory system, your, uh, all the various systems in your business are recording data. And that data can be very useful to professional marketers like me to be able to understand more what's going on in your business. It helps us find people who are not making full use of all of your product lines, all your service lines. It helps us to understand where they come from. There's this concept in marketing that birds of a feather flock together. And a lot of times the data inside your business already 
is telling us a story if we will just read that story, hear that story. And it, and it can really help us grow the business in meaningful ways by f- unlocking um, popular buzzword hacking that growth out of your business as it exists today. And oftentimes when we have this blurry vision, we're just guessing what's working, what's not working. Um, I have been uh, frustrated any number of times by customers who uh, I'm showing them real data and they still want to make decisions based on hunches and personal preferences. Um, Data doesn't lie. It is the best indicator we have of success or failure. And so if we aren't tracking and reporting all the available data, uh, we're just guessing at what's happening, or worse yet, we're using anecdotal feedback to make decisions. And that might keep us on a path of something that really isn't working, even though we love it. When you have your data working for you, and all of these calculations can be made, you can know exactly what's working and what's not working. And oftentimes, avoiding failure with advertising is when things aren't working, stop doing that and move that budget to something that does work, okay? We developed a structure for making this happen that we call our bullseye method. And essentially, if you think of the traditional like dartboard, the outer ring, the inner ring, and the bullseye, When we're developing advertising strategy, what we're really trying to do is hone in on what's going to get you the best marketing ROI for every dollar you invest. So the bullseye method is a three-stage structure for starting with what's plausible and getting to what really works. And here's how we do that. So the outer ring is is step one, stage one. Uh, Start with the most plausible ideas that you have and perform tests to see what gains the most traction. Let's say we start with three, four, five plausible ideas and we put small test budgets in them. In the digital environment today, we can know with pretty good certainty which ones of those have uh, traction, have promise to be your core advertising mechanism your core strategy. And if we start with five, chances are that maybe two will make this cut. Then the second inner ring, the second iteration, becomes about dropping the duds, what's clearly not gonna work, and focusing more energy on the things that at least kinda worked, right? And coming up with different variations on those to get them to perform at their best. Uh, We had a client about this time last year that we were doing okay in terms of actionable leads. Then we took one word. We took the word uh, estimate, free estimate, and we switched it to free inspection. And we had an over 30% increase in the number of actionable leads changing one word. So believe me when I say that messaging is still an art and messaging is critical to the overall success here. And we wouldn't have found that if not for following our bullseye method that said, try different words. Now, once we get to the third stage where we're really trying to hit that bullseye, we narrow in again on just the things that have worked the best so far. And we really, really, really focus our energy on how much return on investment can we get if we really drive the frequency, if we really put all of our energy into this one concept. This is like becoming a mad scientist in your own marketing laboratory. It's it's starting with several ideas and narrowing down to what really, really, really works based on data, okay? And so, yeah, marketing's got, this sounds complicated. Yeah, marketing's gotten more complex. Compared to 30 years ago when I started doing this, uh, it's infinitely more difficult. But it's also becoming much more accountable. And so use this to your advantage. These tools that 
that Amazon and Google and all the big guys are using against you every day can now be readily accessed by you through companies like ours. And you can approach your advertising with the same level of sophistication as a Fortune 100 company. It's absolutely true. So, let's summarize. Ready, fire, aim. Let's turn it into ready, aim, fire. We want to organize your marketing strategy in the right order. And we want to hold every idea accountable for ROI. Okay? Second, be your potential customer. We really want to remove the friction from this process. Put yourself in the shoes of that customer. Guide that customer to success and point out how you help avoid failures along the way. All right. Third and final, data is your best friend. Um, there are people amongst us. I'm not one of them. I'm, I would guess I'm what you would call a math nerd. There are people among us who don't like math, don't like doing math. That's okay. We do the math. <laughs> we find the data. We organize the data. We do the math for you. And what seems complicated really doesn't have to be when people who know the math and do the math every day are helping you and, and guiding you, right? So constantly experiment uh, and fail your way to success as quickly as possible. Uh, many of us get into this trap where we fail, we have to like sleep it off for a while, we fail, we have to calm back down, we have to forget that we failed, fail again. Uh, this is really like things like the bullseye method is really designed to help you fail to success as inexpensively and as quickly as possible. Because once you do that, you cross that precipice and you have something that works, you can really drive growth into your business in a way that you don't, haven't ever seen. And that, and that will take you back to a time when you were starting this business and you were excited and you were just thrilled and, and you couldn't wait to take on the world with this business. We can get you back to that way of thinking. And here's where that starts. Let's talk about the digital basics, the minimum any business ought to be doing online. This is something we've developed over the last several years. Um, about 12 years ago, I made personally a very conscious decision to move on from being in the legacy media business to digital media. And when I did that, I wanted to find a way to really address the needs of small business uh, in the digital environment. How does a small business that's used to advertising in things like Yellow Pages, uh, uh, television, radio, direct mail, how does it evolve to survive and thrive in this digital environment and with the economics that a small business is used to? And so everything potential customers can and should find about you online is what I call your digital footprint. And we start there because when we talk about the three reasons that advertising fails, and number two is like friction in the process, too many roadblocks, what I found was that we were advertising for businesses and those businesses weren't really ready for new customers to come looking at them digitally. And the fact is that no matter what business you're in, anywhere from 100% to two thirds of all your customers are engaging you in some way online as part of the process, probably before you're getting to them. Before they're walking in your door, before they're calling you, before they're doing anything, they are looking at your digital footprint. And what does it look like? Well, there's your website, kind of at the heart of it. Uh, there's your social media. There's your search engine performance. There's things like search engine marketing. There's uh, all of your various uh, organic search performance. And, and then there's data that's coming from everything from your website to your phone system to all sorts of other things that can be useful in helping us understand 
and convey what people want to know about you online and what moves them, what helps them as quickly as possible become what we call an actionable lead. Somebody that you then can engage, right? People say to me often like, well, what does all this kind of stuff cost? So to be fair, I like to show you what a lot of our customers invest on a regular basis. So we have Digital Basics, Digital Basics Plus, and Digital Basics Max. Those are our three kind of packages, if you will. Most customers are not buying a straight ahead package. We tend to customize just about everything we do. But I find that these are great launching off points that help people understand what they're buying, what it's intended to do, okay? But stop worrying about what you're gonna buy or not buy. I want you to think about a, because you're in that tried it and it didn't work mode, right? And that's fair, I, I totally understand that. We recognize that you are burned out on advertising, you are burned in any number, almost everybody that I sit down with has some sort of horror story to share. And I have my own horror stories to share. We created Digital Basics Lite as the first step in the process, the next step in the process. And it's our way of investing in you long before you ever invest in us. We created Digital Basics Lite so that some very fundamental things happen. Your Google Analytics is set up, it's linked with your search engine registration. I don't know how many times I sit down with advertisers, businesses like yours, and I say, What's, uh, how many visits to your website are you getting on a daily basis? No visibility, blurry vision. If you don't have Google Analytics set up on your website, please let me set it up for you for free. It'll change your life. It'll change how you think about your website. Number two, we sit down all the time with people who have paid some big bucks in some cases for a website and they assume that as part of that price, their website, everything that's, that needs to be done on the back end to make sure that Google and Bing and other search engines know your website has happened, right? You would assume that. I think it's fair to, to expect that. And yet, it doesn't happen so often. Uh, Google has a free product called Search Console. It needs to be set up. It needs to be thoroughly set up. And it needs to be linked to your Google Analytics. If you're not doing those two simple things, you're leaving a lot of organic traffic on the table. The third thing, directories, maps. This is how people find you these days. Even if they're not coming to a showroom or a storefront, this is still how people find roofers, plumbers, uh, things they need, even if it's a service business. But certainly, if they're seeking out a retailer of any kind, maps directories is how this happens. The third big aspect of your digital footprint is this is these directories and maps. And if you're not giving if you're not owning them like assets of your business, they're no different than your phone number or your domain name. These have to be owned by you, controlled by you, and they have to be very thoroughly set up. And if you just do these simple things online, you'll be amazed. We often see 300, 900 1100% increase in how frequently people businesses are shown in search results almost immediately. Let us do this for you for free as our way of investing in you before you ever even think about investing in us. Okay? And if you just look below this video, you're going to see a way to sign up and do that. If you're like I'm not ready for all that, here's a here's a a, a default in case of emergency, break glass thing you can do. Right below that, you can schedule some free time with us to ask questions, to like explore the mystery that like that is why your advertising is failing. If you're like listening to me and you're like, yeah, but my business is completely different. Maybe, uh, but I've I've worked with a business or two in 30 years. And I believe fundamentally that we can unlock growth in your business 
that maybe you've decided it's not going to happen. Maybe you've given up on whether or not that can actually be done for your business. Give us an opportunity to talk about it. We've had customers tell us that we've rejuvenated their enthusiasm for their business. We've had customers tell us that their business has increased 400%. We've had customers tell us all sorts of things that if you'd have, if you'd have like been in the room when they made the decision to start working with us, they would never have thought that was their expectation. So I'm not saying have massive expectations of anybody that you sit down with to talk about advertising, but I am saying have the conversation. Advertise the business. Put a structure around it so that it's logical and it makes sense and it's designed to accomplish something very specific. Make it accountable. But don't just sit and spin. Okay? That's what three that's what this whole presentation is about. If we inspire somebody to just think of their business a little more logically, to expect growth out of their business, then we've done what we came here for today. If it's moved you to want to talk more about your business, to want to take these next steps with Digital Basics Lite, let's get going on that. Go down there, scroll down, and start filling some stuff out. Or we'll meet you where you are. Text us, message us. There's all sorts of ways down there to connect. Do it on your terms. We look forward to talking to you soon. Thanks.